Hello. 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 Yo, yo. Hello. 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 How did Apple's iPhone achieve success so quickly and maintain popularity despite its many competitors? We will examine the iPhone epidemic using Malcolm Gladwell's theory of the tipping point. We will show how, according to Gladwell, the iPhone reached the moment of critical mass, the threshold, the boiling point, focusing on three rules of epidemics, the law of the few, the stickiness factor, the power of context. The first iPhone was released on June 29, 2007. At its release, it was the only phone on the market that was solely a touchscreen. It was sold exclusively at AT&T, retailing at $499. Within the first two days, 270,000 were sold. A year later, Apple released their second model of the iPhone, the 3G. This model was cheaper, faster, and had more capabilities. This time, over a million phones were sold within two days of its release. Since then, Apple has released at least one new model of the iPhone between the months of June and October each year. They have also expanded their carriers to Verizon, Sprint, and T-Mobile. The most recent releases are the iPhone 5 models, the latest of which, the 5S, was released in 2013. So what caused the iPhone to be so successful and continues to make it one of the number one selling phones on the market? According to Malcolm Gladwell, author of The Tipping Point, How Little Things Can Make a Big Difference, there are three key rules that generate social epidemics among society. These terms are the law of the few, stickiness factor, and power of context. The law of the few examines how people influence social epidemics. According to Gladwell, there are a few select people who possess a rare set of social gifts. It is these people, the connectors, mavens, and salesmen, who are largely responsible for starting social epidemics. iPhones were in high demand from the moment of their release. In order to explore the connectors, mavens, and salesmen of the iPhone epidemic, we have to go back to the creation of the Apple company. Connectors are people who have a wide network of friends, acquaintances, and connections from an array of different social groups and settings. The connectors of the iPhone epidemic were the 10 original employees of Apple. These employees came from a wide variety of backgrounds and were connected to a multitude of different professional and social groups and were able to market the Apple brand to a substantial audience. Mavens know all there is to know about a particular product and its competitors and want to share this information with others. One of the key mavens of the Apple epidemic was Mike Markula, an entrepreneur and the first big investor in Apple Inc. In 1977, he invested $250,000 into the Apple company. Markula was an expert on technology and finance and could see how innovative and advanced Apple's technology was. Without his support and expertise, Apple Inc. might not have had such major success. Steve Wozniak and Steve Jobs were two of Apple's original 10 employees and were not only part of the group of connectors, but were also the original salesmen of the company. According to Gladwell, the salesmen of a social epidemic are those individuals who have a powerful skill of persuading others and are responsible for creating the high demand of a certain product. From the beginning, the two Steves, as they were called, were the face of Apple. People knew them, loved them, and were influenced to buy Apple products because of them. The law of the few shows how essential the right people are to an epidemic such as the iPhone. But to reach the tipping point, there are other components that must also come into play. Gladwell's idea of the stickiness factor involves how effective an idea or product stays in the mind of the potential viewer or consumer. The quality of messages are what causes them to stick. For the iPhone, Apple advertisements have been about showing iPhone users what kind of product they have and showing non-iPhone users what they're missing out on. By using their commercials as tutorials, Apple shows people how to do more with their phones. In Apple's latest iPhone commercial, Powerful, only one thing happens. People use their phones. There is no narration or interruption, which is a common theme in Apple's simple yet effective advertisements. Immediately after launching the ad, Apple put up a web page with links to the App Store where they could purchase the apps featured in the commercial. Another reason the iPhone has managed to stick around was discovered when simonlycontacts.co.uk polled 2,275 iPhone users and found a staggering 59% admitted to blind loyalty to the phone. The definition of blind loyalty established was users who stated they would not even consider researching other handsets when upgrading in the future. When asked why, 78% said they couldn't imagine having a different type of phone. The power and appeal of the Apple brand cannot be denied. 
The iPhone energized the smartphone industry at a time when innovation was dormant. It motivated competitors to kickstart the sector with such vigor that mobile devices now drive the evolution of the majority of industries around the world. The power of context of the iPhone was its innovation. It was drastically more advanced than any product released at the time, yet still simple to use. Steve Jobs says the iPhone is a revolutionary and magical product that is literally five years ahead of any other mobile phone. When the iPhone was released in 2007, the best-selling phone was the Nokia 1200, but the smartphones at the time included Moto Q, Blackberry, Palm Trio, and Nokia E62. These phones had stationary buttons and controls. While some smartphones had a touchscreen feature using only a stylus, the iPhone was the first one to use multi-touch, where the device could detect multiple finger touches at once. The iPhone was innovative in that it allowed the user to download apps and allowed users to access the entire internet. Apple developed the slogan, there's an app for that. Most of the apps that I use are were specifically made for the iPhone. The iPhone was only available exclusively through AT&T for the first few years, and only available in the US and certain countries in Europe, which made it more desirable. When the iPhone was finally available to one other carrier in 2011, one million Verizon iPhones were sold in the debut weekend. It was these three factors, the law of the few, the stickiness factor, and the power of context, that caused the iPhone to reach its tipping point and its continued success today. An iPod. A phone. Are you getting it? These are not three separate devices. This is one device. And we are calling it iPhone. <laughs>